It was a big day. It was time to get these doors mounted. I used to be able to dunk a basketball in high school, and now I can't even touch the rim. Getting older sucks. I attached a strap to the side of the door and lifted it up with a skid steer. A second strap helped me keep the door from spinning while I backed it out of the barn. I really wasn't sure how I was going to do this. I figured I'd just jump in and hopefully have some ideas come to me as I went. There was a lot of standing around, scratching my head and looking up that I edited out of this video. I raised it up as high as the skid steer would go. And I thought maybe I could push it the rest of the way up, but I quickly learned there's no chance of that. Just too awkward and, and too heavy. So I stood around a little bit more, scratched my head a little bit more. Then I had the idea to use a come along tied to my walkway inside the barn, which would let me ratchet the door up. And this worked really good actually. As you can tell here from my GoPro door mount. But as I got towards the top, I started getting really nervous that if I got my measurements wrong, the door is just gonna come right through and crash out on top of me. So I climbed up on top of the skid steer and pushed the door the rest of the way to the building. And I didn't get my measurements wrong, so that was good. I could lift the bottom up onto the track. Just barely though, it was heavy. This was actually the right door, so I pushed it over there. I wanted the door to be one inch away from the building, and so I grabbed the block that was one inch thickness, and then I clamped the door to the building using the block as a spacer. On the second door, I trusted myself a little bit more and just pulled the door all the way up against the building. Still kind of scary though. I knew I needed to bolt the brackets for the top rail into studs in the wall, and so I cheated a little bit and just drove some nails on either side of the studs through the siding so I would know where they were on the outside. Yeah, this left little holes in the siding, but it's a barn. Not too worried about it. I attached the rollers for the top of the door and slid on the rail. I hammered in a couple nails on both sides of the rafter directly above the rail, which helped me keep a strap in place while I lifted up on the door as much as it would go without actually lifting the door off the ground. And then at this height, I would mount the brackets. I marked the stud between the two nails and then tap the nails back in. After marking the location of the bracket's bolt holes, I drilled it out and then drove in some four inch leg screws. I'd always hand tighten them so they don't strip out the hole. That little impact driver packs more punch than you'd think. Now that the bracket was mounted to the barn, I could drill out a hole through the rail which will bolt the rail to the bracket. And this was actually one of the hardest things I had to do on the door, was getting this bolt into place. I couldn't use pliers because the door is right underneath the rail, and my fingers would just barely fit up between them. And actually a couple times I got them stuck and I had to slide them out the end of the rail. Every single bolt I got tightened down was a minor victory. Now with the first bracket down on the right, I could repeat the process on the left after rolling the door to that side. And then once I got that one done, I could fill in all the middle ones. It worked really well. I was really excited to get the doors mounted and rolling back and forth on their tracks. But then summer here on the farm happened and the doors got put on the back burner.
four months later, harvest was starting to wrap up, and I could begin thinking about the doors again. I hate looking at unfinished projects, so these doors kind of haunted me all summer long. But that's fine. That's what I gotta do. I was really excited to begin working on them again. These were some old 2x10s that I ripped up when I took out the barn's floor. They need to be ripped down to 2x6s for my doors. And so I cut them to length first. It's a lot of wood for my small table saw, so I just want to rip as little as possible. They were still a couple inches long, so I took some measurements and then cut them to their exact size. I wanted to use lap joints on all these boards so they'd be nice and strong and tied together. So I used my skill saw and my carpenter square to make a lot of cuts and then chipped it out of there with my hammer. I had 32 of these joints to make and I think I got them down to about 8 minutes each by the end of it. I had to be careful because all the boards were slightly different thicknesses which really matters when you're making lap joints. I notched out a square for the box that covered the V rollers. Pretty much doing the same method but using my chop saw. I got the depth on it set so it just cut to my line and then carefully I made a bunch of cuts on these boards. Whenever I'm doing this I always slide the board away from the saw. I could see my hand slipping if I was pushing it towards the saw and I could make for a bad night. The doors didn't sit against each other perfectly. They hit at the bottom and then they opened up about an inch towards the top. And I thought that if I clamped them together before putting these boards in, that the boards might help keep the doors square against each other. I test fit them and made sure everything was going to work before applying the glue. This would have been very hard to do without clamps. I relied on my clamps a ton to pull the pieces together and hold things in place. Once I got the bottom board glued and clamped in place, I moved on to the top one. Next, I laid out and drilled holes for the carriage bolts that will bolt the boards to the metal frames. I also bolted down the supports for my handles to the wood as well. And just had to repeat the process for the other side. I cut the carriage bolts off flush on the back side the next day. 
and the wood framing for the doors is done. I was really happy to see that they closed the gap up a lot as well. Next is attaching the tin between these wooden frames. 